Now we're going to move on to a really fun part of the app, which is displaying live notifications to our users with the help of push notifications. We're in a great position to do this for two reasons. Number one, we've set up our activity feed notifications, which tells users about when a user's liked, followed, or commented on a given post of theirs. So really, we're just going to transfer a lot of that logic into the push notifications functionality that we'll add to just show that to our users in real time. And the activity feed is going to serve as a kind of history of those notifications that they've received. And the second reason is that we're going to set up push notifications using a specific Firebase function. So since we have a lot of experience with Firebase functions, it'll be pretty familiar to you to set up. So first of all, let's cover what our notifications are going to look like. Well, we've been using snack bars across our app when a user's needed to update their profile or something like that. So we're going to use a similar snack bar, snack bar for telling users that someone's liked or commented on a post or is following them at the moment. We're going to show it at the bottom of the screen just like this. And the way that it's going to be displayed is whenever a new activity feed item is created. So if we head back to our database, whenever a new item is added to a feed items collection, we're going to create another on create cloud firestore trigger to take from the data that was just added the information and then send that down to the appropriate user in the form of a snack bar. And one thing to note about setting up push notifications is that when it comes to testing them, you're going to need to run your application on an Android device. So make sure when you are running it with the Flutter VS Code tools, you select Flutter Launch Emulator and choose an Android device instead of the iOS simulator, which we've been using up until now. The iOS simulator can't handle push notifications in development. But we will be setting up notifications for production on both Android and iOS devices. So now to create our Firebase function that will send down push notifications, let's go to the Functions folder and then our familiar index.js file. We'll add this function at the bottom and we're going to name it in a similar fashion to the naming convention that we've been using on delete or on create for the particular resource that was changed. So we're going to call this new function with exports on create activity feed item. So in this video, we're going to be creating the function to send push notifications. And in the next one, we'll see how to actually display that notification in our app for the appropriate device. So since we're using a cloud trigger, we need to start with functions.firestore.document. And the document that we'll be using here will be if we look at the database. Since we're going to be listening on the feed collection for new feed items, the path is going to be feed that's connected to a given user by their user ID, then feed items, and then we have the activity feed item itself. So again, the two unknowns that we have here are the user ID and the item. So those are going to be expressed with wildcards. So for document, it'll start with slash feed slash and the wildcard user ID slash feed items slash and the wildcard activity feed item. This is going to listen with on create for the function within it. We get snapshot and context. Once again, this will be an async function. And at the beginning, we'll do a console log and say activity feed item created when this runs and the data for the activity feed item to come in will be available on snapshot.data. So what's the first step? Well, first we want to get the user connected to the feed. So based on the user ID, we want to fetch that user's data. So once again, we'll create a user ID variable the ID will come from context.params.userID. And first we want to create a ref for that user. So we'll call this the user ref. And we'll use admin.firestore and select the document users slash. And then we can interpolate 
using this dollar sign and curly braces syntax very similar to flutter when we need to have need to get some map and some property off of it we can interpolate that value but first make sure to use these back ticks surrounding this string as compared to double quotes which you could use in flutter and then we can interpolate the user id value so now we have a ref on the user's collection to that specific user and we can get them with await user ref dot get and we'll put that in a variable called doc so the next step once we have our user data once we have user check if they have a notification token so how are we going to get this value off of doc we know that we can get data with the data method and then from that object that's returned to us that map we can get a specific property called Android notification token this value is going to be set whenever our user signs in successfully in home this is something that we'll add later on actually in the very next video so if you don't have a clear understanding of it right now you will very soon but we're going to be updating a value called Android notification token and we'll put that in a variable of the same name so only if that user has this token on their user document which we are getting can we send our notification so we're just going to check to see if Android token notification then we're going to send the notification otherwise we'll just console log and say no token for user cannot send notification so for step two we can just say additionally send notification if they have a token and underneath we're going to create a separate function called send notification to do just that with the token so we'll make a function called send notification that's going to accept two values first the token of the user as well as the data coming from snapshot.data again we need to use the activity feed item to create to send down our message so that's what we'll call the first parameter Android notification token and the second will be activity feed item up at the top we're going to declare a variable called body and we're going to declare this with let because we want to give it a certain value conditionally we can't give it the value const because then we can't reassign that value and we're going to set up a switch statement and this is going to consist of switching based on a certain value and namely we're going to switch body value based off of notification type so as you recall we have many different types of notifications comment like and follow we want to switch based off of the activity feed items type value so we can provide that here activity feed item dot type and if we have a given case we can say case and if that matches a given string such as comment then we want to set body to the appropriate text to show so for our first case if type is comment for our body we're going to once again use template literals and say activity feed item dot username the username associated with that notification replied and we're going to get that value from activity feed item dot comment data for a comment then we'll have a break to break from our switch statement and continue on with the function we don't want to return we just want to break from switch so we can continue with the function to go to the end then we'll create another case and this time for like and we want to make sure that we format this correctly so in the case of like 
we'll set body to activity feed item dot username liked your post. And then for the final case, follow. We'll say activity feed item dot username started following you. And that's it for our message text. So after our switch statement, we'll continue on with our function by creating our message. So that was the third step. And the fourth step is create message for push notification. So we'll make a const variable called message and we'll initialize it to have the values first notification and on this notification object we can set both the title value to whatever we like. I'm not going to do that. Instead we're just going to set a body value. So if we add body like this it's the equivalent of setting both the key and the value to body. It's just a shorthand syntax. And then for the token, we need to provide the token to specify that this message is only going to be sent to one recipient. And that is the token value that's specified with Android notification token that we pass to this function. We'll see how that will be executed in just a second. And then also we can send along some data on this data object. And we want to set a value of recipient to doc.data.id. And we can create a variable called user ID if we like. Well, actually, since we're getting the ID from context and putting in this user ID variable, we don't need to redeclare something else. We can just set that to user ID. And then the last step after creating our message five is to send message with admin dot messaging. So using Firebase admin, instead of using our Firestore instance from admin dot Firestore to send push notifications, we can just say admin dot messaging dot send and send will accept an object of our message. And this returns a promise or a future. So we can chain on a then statement and get back a response, then an arrow function. And here we can just console log successfully sent message. And for the second argument, provide the response data. So we'll just add a comment here saying response is a message ID string. We're just going to get an ID associated with our sent message and we can catch any errors. And for the error parameter, we can get information about the error. So we'll also console log error sending message and pass through the error in the second argument there. Now, finally, we need to execute send notification. So we'll call it right here within our if send notification, we'll take our Android notification token variable, and the activity feed item, which will come from snapshot.data. So this is our entire function, where we're listening on the feed collection for every new activity feed item that's created. Once that's done, we run on create, where we get the ID of the user for whose feed an activity feed item was added, we fetch their data and we check to see if they have an Android notification token, which is going to be set if they've chosen to accept push notifications. Only in that event will we take the notification token and the data from the created activity feed item. And to make this more explicit, we can say activity feed item is equal to snapshot.data. We could say created activity feed item. So 
we pass the token and the activity feed item data to send notification. There we take a look at the items type. If it's a comment, then we provide its own text and the same for like and follow. So we make that the body of our message. Then we pass through the token to say only send it to this recipient. And we add information about the recipient, namely their user ID. Then we send our message with admin.messaging with the send method. And that'll either be resolved successfully or result in an error which we have to catch. So now, making sure all of our code's written correctly, we can save and then deploy this function. So consider that we have a lot of functions here. And whenever we run Firebase deploy dash dash only functions, what that does is it redeploys all of our functions. And we don't necessarily want to do that considering we haven't made any changes to our other functions. So to just deploy a single function that we've created, we can say Firebase deploy only functions and then add a colon and specify the name of the function that we created. And that was on create activity feed item. And once that's done, you can deploy it. And in the next video, we'll test this out, see how to get our token for our users that have accepted push notifications and see how to display the message that we're getting from this function within a snack bar to our users.